Hello, hello everyone and welcome. My name is Caroline Barnett McGraw with The Clearing and we are a non 12 step dual diagnosis residential addiction treatment center. And what that translates to is that we help you to alter your life for good. We help people who are struggling with depression, anxiety, trauma, despair, grief, loneliness, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, addiction issues. We help them to reclaim their lives. And what we want to talk about today is really a cornerstone of what we do. And it's teaching people how to handle their upset, how to handle the anger, the hurt, the pain, the jealousy, all of those emotions that rise within us and we say, I'm upset. So I want to start by saying, really asking you a question. How many times have you heard, how many times have you said, I am upset because I'm upset because the traffic is bad. I'm upset because my spouse doesn't listen to me. I'm upset because she didn't show up on time. All of these are examples of the I am upset because paradigm. And this is really, really prevalent in our culture. We say this constantly. If you listen for it, both in yourself and in those you, you interact with, you'll hear it a lot. I am upset because of X, Y, and Z. That's why I'm upset. And we really believe that. We really, truly believe that our upset is because of these external conditions. And conversely, we also believe that if those conditions would just change, if she would just arrive on time, if he would just listen to me, then I would be happy. Then I would be okay. If this would happen, then I would be okay. And the problem with this, of course, is that we don't always have control. We, in this case, we don't have control over, does she show up on time? That's not within our power. That's not within our control. And so what we've done is we've put our happiness and we've made it dependent upon a circumstance that is not within our control. So once again, taking you through this, I won't be happy unless she shows up on time, but I have zero control over whether she shows up on time. So where does that leave me? That leaves me in a very, very disempowered place. And so often when people come to us, they have years of practice in thinking this way. If only my mother had loved me, if only this had happened, if only that would happen, then I would be okay. And really what we do is help people to step into their own power and to take ownership of their choices and their experience and thereby to alter their lives. And now I'm not, to be clear, I'm not saying that this means saying everything is just my fault. No, it goes a lot deeper than that. This is not about fault. It's not about blame. It's about realizing that as the principles of spiritual psychology tell us, nothing outside of you causes your disturbances. I'll say that again, because that's a pretty revolutionary idea. Nothing outside of you causes your disturbances. And for me, what that means, it's actually a profoundly empowering statement because it means I do cause my own disturbances. And again, let me be clear. This is not to condone any acts of violence, any acts of abuse. No, no, this is not about that. It's about taking ownership of the internal felt experience. So I may not always have control over what happens to my body, my health. I may be in a plane that's going down, for example, and I don't have control over that. However, I do have dominion over my felt experience. I get to decide what disturbs me and what doesn't disturb me. And that is very, very freeing when you realize that. So why is this true? Why can we say nothing outside of us causes our disturbances? Well, let's take a really basic example. Say you are on the highway and you're driving and you're, you're the one in the, in the driver's seat and there's someone next to you in the passenger seat and another car cuts you off and you freak out you're like, oh, that stupid son of a gun, you know, and you're swearing at him and you're just going all out and it's really, it's upsetting to you. It's causing a disturbance, but the person 
next to you sees that same thing happen and just smiles and just looks out the window and is not ruffled at all. And this is very confusing because you're both in the same car, the same thing just happened, but one of you is upset, one of you isn't. What's the deal? What's happening? So in that example, you as the driver, you have made you've made that car cutting you off mean something. You've made it mean, for example, oh, there are so many jerks on the road. Everyone's out for themselves. Nobody respects me. Nobody, you know, nobody cares anymore. You, you spin a whole story in your head. And maybe perhaps the person next to you is thinking, you know, wow, maybe that driver is on the way to the hospital. I can't know can't know what's going on for that driver, but thank God, look, we avoided an accident. We're safe. That could be their experience of the same event. So the point being the same event happened, the car cut you off, but you have very, very different experiences of that same event. And that's what we mean by nothing outside of you causes your disturbances, right? Because the stimulus is the same. The car's cutting you off either way, but you're having very, very different responses to it. And related to this is we also know that if you're feeling upset, if you're feeling really triggered by the fact that that car cut you off, then that points to an unresolved issue within you. There's no judgment here. Unresolved issues are not bad. I will say that again, there's no judgment. Unresolved issues are not bad. Rather, they are opportunities for growth. So if you're in that car and you get really triggered and you're like, oh, I'm so angry, I wanna punch something, that guy cut me off. It points to a place within you that is troubled and that is hurting. Because we also know beneath every experience of anger, there's a feeling of hurt that's present. And particularly for men in our society, it's much safer for them to express anger than it is to express hurt. For women, it's often safer to express depression or apathy or indifference. Um, but we actually know that depression is anger turned inward. So the core emotion is very similar. It's just the expression of it looks very different. So going back to the main point, unresolved issues are not bad. They're just signposts. They're saying, hey, there's something you need to pay attention to. It's kind of like if you get a splinter in your foot and you put pressure on that foot and you feel the splinter, it's an indicator. Oh, I need to get some tweezers. I need to look at that. I need to remove the object that is causing pain in my physical body. And when you get a signal, a strong feeling of upset, a feeling of anger, indignance, rage, whatever it might be, it's a signal from your psyche that something is causing pain and something needs to be addressed. And you need to give yourself some emotional first aid, essentially. And that's really what we teach. We teach people how to take care of themselves mentally and emotionally so that when life happens and uh, life is very good about bringing our pain points to light, because if you, if you don't know what they are, just, just keep living your life and life will bring them to your attention. And really there is a process by which we can learn to apply love to the parts of ourselves that hurt and therefore we can heal. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. But before I close, I know we have some live viewers and I wanted to just glance over at the comments and check in. So I'll take a peek. <laughs> Caleb, I love that. My wife is never on time. I had to let that go years ago. Yes, yes. And that's a great example of this is someone who has had lots of practice seeing someone be late and has learned to not make it mean something painful. So that's a, that's a great example. Um, Tutti says, hello. So does Kimberly. Hi. Do they ever let you out of that little room? Oh, Steven, I love that you said that. That's hilarious. Um, this is my home office. So this is where we have the video and everything set up. Um, so yes, one of these times, maybe I will take the laptop out of this room. <laughs> they do. They have been incredibly generous with me. I'm not trapped in the little room. Oh, Roger says, very intelligent lady. Thank you. Keith sends love and Kelly says hi. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. It's lovely to get to interact with you. 
and I will post a couple of more resources in the comments section if you want to if you want to read more about about how to handle stuff like this about what to do when you are upset because and to be at cause and to be the one who stands in your own power and really alters your life. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'll talk to you soon. Bye now.